To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. Presented by Ebix Cash. हर खुशी के लिए काफी है. Hello and welcome again to the Business Today show. I'm your host Udayan Mukherjee. My guest today on the show is India's richest woman. She also happens to be the daughter of one of the pioneers of the Indian IT sector. But that would be an unfair way to introduce her because she's very much her own person and happens to be the first chairperson of a listed Indian IT company. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome on the show for you Roshni Nadar Malhotra, chairman of HCL Technologies. Roshni, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome and How have you been? Thank you so much, Udayan. I've been good. I hope you've all been well and in good health. Yes, so far, touch wood. Uh, but uh, you know, but, uh, as I introduced you by saying that you are all of those things. But at one point, if I remember correctly, you had set your heart on the on being a media person. And if I remember correctly, you also interned at CNN and Sky News. So I thought Roshni Nadar was going to become a, a media face. What happened in the course of events? I mean, did your father take you aside one day and say, "Roshni, all this is fine, but who's going to manage this multi-billion-dollar enterprise?" So, uh, is that how and when you decided to change course? Well, I would have to say, at least my media journey started with CNBC in Delhi as an intern, and I remember seeing you there. But obviously, I was a junior intern. Um, no, I think uh, then. Um, Sometimes the best uh, experience comes from diversity of experience. So, as um, you know, I was raised in a fairly uh, liberal uh, household. Um, you know, allowed to do whatever whatever I wanted to pursue. I think if Shiv had uh, serious plans of HCL, he would have asked me to do science in grade twelve and then put me into engineering. but i did commerce and then i pursued an undergraduate education in radio television and film with a focus on journalism and um then i was uh, um i had interned with cnbc in delhi uh, one summer i had interned with cnn and then i worked at sky news in london for about a year and a half and um i think uh, the only conversation we did have which was a very interesting conversation he said that even if you'd like to at one time um have a media empire you still have to know the ins and outs of business so please go and do business school so i think <laughs> that's how i landed up at uh, kellogg uh, doing my mba and um after that um uh moved back to india so uh uh that was really the journey of getting moving from india going into media business school and then moving back do you ever intend to take him up on that offer by surprising him with starting a media empire of your own or now you're too entrenched in the hcl fold to think about all of that it seems like a distant memory well um i i love uh, content so in um uh, in the habitats trust which is a foundation that i'm a founder and trustee of uh, i have actually been producing uh, tv series which have been on the animal planet and national geographic a uh, couple of years ago i produced a very small children's film uh, so whenever i get time i do uh, keep uh, my mind and hands and feet in content and media mm. it's interesting that you mention all this because you know it, you have other interests i mean i was reading that you're i didn't know this but that you are a classic a musician a classically trained musician is that right i mean do you ever find time for all of that any longer no i i mean uh that was all during school and uh, then i just haven't had a chance to review that now i vicariously live through my children <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how is it uh, being Shiv Nadar's daughter? I mean it's an inevitable question. I mean you you can't get away from it. Uh, of course, you've built your own life. You are now at the helm. You steer you're the chairperson of the group. Uh, but you know he must be a larger than life figure in your life and career. Uh, 
and th those are big boots to fill that because he's such a pioneer in the in the sector how do you feel about being his daughter does it weigh you down is it an inspiration what would you say i think uh, it's a privilege um you know i uh I, there's no way to fill a person like that's shoes. So I prefer to say that I stand on his shoulders and it's an honor to be able to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think what's been there and tremendous is if uh, you just remove, you can't remove, but if I, you know, that he's, 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 he's a great teacher. And he's been a great teacher his entire career. Uh, you know, uh, HCL has not just been built by him, but the brilliant people that he surrounded himself with and so many that have learned along the way, including myself. You know, um, he stepped off the role of being an active CEO um, almost 20 years ago. Since then, HCL has had multiple CEOs who have all also been his students because they all started their careers in HCL. So similarly, I think for all of us, um, uh, the larger in la than life figure is actually an amazing teacher. So I think that um, it's been um, a privilege and he continues to be that. Mm. Yeah, your breaking in into the fold has also been an interesting one because I mean, you know, you carry the Nader surname. I mean, you could have just been brought in and placed at the top. But the way you got into the fold is when you came back, you first joined the HCL foundations, the Shivnather foundations, then you moved to the board, then you sat on the board for a while. And it's only after a few years that you observed things that you were allowed to take on the hot seat of the chairperson. How would you describe this journey and the process of breaking in that you've had over the years? So, um, you know, when I returned from business school, um, actually I returned uh, and the the holding company of the group, which is HCL Corporation, um, you know, Shiv immediately mm. made me the CEO of HCL Corporation. Um, you know, HCL Corporation, because of its shareholding structure of the companies, has a balance sheet that's almost as big as the operating companies themselves. So I think it was an instant, um, you know, push into the deep side of, you know, how to actually manage and run um, a large uh, portfolio and that taught me a lot um, and that was 2009 um, and the, and it was a very interesting time between 2009 2013 I was actually spending a lot of time uh, between both the group companies um, HCL technologies as well as HCL infosystems uh, working in different uh, uh, um, departments working with different leaders. You know, at one point I was on the shop floor at our uh, manufacturing facility in Pondicherry because those days we used to make computers. Uh, you know, then I was in Vinit's office working with Zulfia in marketing. So I think there were lots of roles that got me uh, familiarized with the huge group that was there. And uh, in 2013, I was inducted on the board and, uh, um, you know, I think uh, it was a very interesting time because, you know, one was also then seeing transition from, uh, you know, beneath as a CEO, then to Anant, and then from Anant to CVK. Um, in the last couple of years, our own transition from Anil being a CFO for so long to Pratik now being the CFO, um, lots of board changes as well. So I think that um, it was a very um, uh, interesting induction because um, I think Shiv deliberately made sure that I was always in places where key decision making takes place because it decides the trajectory and the strategic direction for the group in the organization. So, um, uh, you know, Shiv stepped off as uh, the chairman last year um, at which point, uh, you know, um, I, I was appointed. And um, uh, so I think it's been a very interesting journey, but always being at the forefront of where key decisions get made that really decide, you know, the future of the organization 
uh, was very critical in my uh, learning journey. So let me ask you this, you've named or you spoke about all these CEOs and sitting on the board and sort of imbibing the culture of the group at any point, you know, you could have easily been marked as an outsider because you were a woman and you were the boss's daughter. Did you ever feel any sign of resistance or, or a trace of resistance as you were working your way into the top of the group? Or do you think you were accepted with open arms without any kind of rancor? I mean, I wouldn't know, right? And I guess it wouldn't matter. So, hmm. I, I I, you know, know. and uh, no, I, I, you know, then I, 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 you know, I've, I'm an only child. I've been around Shiv and just been around all these individuals at office literally since I was a kid. So, you know, I think a lot of my equations with a lot of these people is also not just professional, but actually quite personal. So uh, it's a very different uh, equation. Mm. I, I, it's difficult to explain, but I think they've, they've all been my mentors and teachers at some point as well. So, um, you know, I've known a lot of the individuals at HCL for such a long time that uh, uh, mm. I, I think it was, I hope it was okay. <laughs> No, I think I, I think I understand what you mean that there was some affection, which is usually not the case between board members and uh, and another board person. But uh, I, I think in your case there might have been some affection, as you put it. I mean, this literally saw you as a child. But you know, you spoke about uh, interacting with many of the CEOs. But I want to ask you. I mean, while you were at the board uh, and just about to take over, you had this major $2 billion IBM deal on products and platforms which was going through. And it may well be a very important cog in the wheel for HCL Tech going forward. Uh, did that deal process also teach you a lot? And do you continue to be quite invested in that pro products platform that you sort of cobbled up uh, while you were there? No, uh, then I think that would have to be one of my largest learnings, not just for me, but for uh, the board as well, because um, Strategically, it, it's, um, it's, it's really um, a pivot and a shift. Um, we were doing, we were always doing um, a lot of business in IP and in solutions and in products and platforms. But when we actually took the leap to acquire these IBM products, actually, it's not the IBM products per se, but it's how to do software business which is very different than what we otherwise were doing, which is, you know, ITBS or engineering uh, services. So, uh, and now the um, HCL software is almost one third of our re revenues. And it's a very large part of a uh, strategic part of how we do business. And what we've learned along the way, and there's still more to do is um, the way we had to build those teams out you know, the kind of skills required to do software business, the kind of investment cycles. Um, there's so much learned and it's very different than how the rest of uh, the business functions, which is a lot more predictable and per perhaps even understandable by the markets. So I think it's been a strategic uh, move for us. It's something that we continue to grow. It's uh, given us access to over, glo to over 2000 global CXOs which would have otherwise taken HCL as a company um, about a decade to develop those relationships. You know, the customers that came with it, not just the revenues, um, the people that came with it. Um, so I think that um, uh, it has taken a couple of years to settle down, but all in all, uh, this strategic investment was required and I think it will hold us in good stead. Just to get back uh, to Shiv for a second, when he started HCL Tech and HCL Tech actually started becoming a big company, I mean, that was the time when Y2K was happening and it was such a big tailwind for the entire sector. Uh, today, it's all about cloud transformation. Uh, how big an opportunity is this whole rush towards digitizing everything? Do you think this digital wave or cloud transformation is as big an opportunity or even a bigger tailwind than Y2K might have been in your father's days? It's uh, certainly, uh, I think, uh, uh, the largest tailwind has been, uh, sadly, the pandemic, because it has pushed the demand for digitization that much more faster. Uh, what would have it taken maybe two or three years, you know, all of a sudden in the last 15 to 18 months just took off. And, um, you know, there was a Gartner report that said that by um, 2025, 
you know, cloud transformation will become the foundation for all intelligent enterprises. So it's not just tech companies. So I think that um, it's here, it's here to stay. It's getting adopted faster and faster. Um, you know, at, at HCL, we have the HCL Cloud Smart offerings. You know, we were one of the first to um, dedicate uh, units to hyperscalers such as Google, Microsoft, AWS. Um, there's a lot of investment we're putting. And again, I think then uh, the investment is not just in opening up business and opportunities, but it's actually skilling the people who are going to get us to the next step. And in solution architects, you know, it's it all eventually boils down to more than tech, all our companies actually employ, you know, lakhs and lakhs of people. So I think that it's technology is moving fast and we have to move as fast. Let me ask you a little bit about the other aspect of your father, which is very well known, which is the philanthropic side, because Indian businesses often do very well. Indian businessmen may become billionaires, but they're not always very keen to give back as much as they've got. Uh, but your father, like, I mean, people like Shiv Nadar and Azim Premji are leading lights in the field of, field of philanthropy. Is that something which your heart beats for as well? I mean, do you see that as, as a kind of a major prerogative for you? Uh, definitely. Um... Oh, then um, Shivnada Foundation was founded in 1994 and Shiva established the SSN College of Engineering in Chennai. Um, all the rest of the institutions, um, Shivnada University, the Shivnada Schools, Vidya Gyan, the Kirinada Museum of Art, Shiksha, um, um, were all established after 2009, <laughs> after, after I returned. So I think that, um, you know, I think I'd like to say that it was a joint effort between Shiv, me, um, Kiran, my mother, as well as Shikhar to actually get down and say that we wanted to build institutions um, and, um, you know, focus our attention there. So um, I think a lot of that has happened more recently, as in 2009 being more recent than 1994. Um, and uh, the foundation has really taken good wings um by march of 2022 we would have spent a billion um you know we've got uh 20 you know we've got 13000 students uh in the system at the moment 21000 uh, alumni all over the world doing incredibly well so i think um it's also taken the foundation about two decades to mature and to see the kind of impact have and it's and it's it's a very different foundation because we're not spending that billion towards thousands of and millions of lives we're doing it much more focused but i think shiv's um, premise was that he is a product of quality quality education and i think quality education uh, still is uh, uh, there's much left to be desired in our country so i think the more that we can work towards that uh, the better it is you mentioned your mother. I mean, tell tell me a bit more about how your equation with her is like, because she's also done such a stellar job of the Kiran Nadar Museum. Are you interested in art yourself? I mean, do you guys talk about it or is it something which is not really a passion for you? Um, no, actually, uh, she's amazing. She's uh, a national bridge player. She's one of the only uh, women in India that plays in the open circuit. In 2018, she was an Asian Games bronze medalist. Um, you know, she's a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Uh, so she's a, so before art came, actually bridge has been her passion. She's been playing bridge since she was in her early twenties. Mm. Um, she started collecting art in the eighties. So again, uh, you know, I grew up with HCL on one side and art on the other. Unfortunately, bridge, I didn't pick up shame on me. Um, and, um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, today, I think in the world, she's perhaps one of the largest collector of modern and contemporary Indian art. Um, in, again, in, the, in about 2010, 11, you know, we thought that, you know, every, everybody has great collections, but you know, um, India, uh, Indian art is always considered as, um, you know, uh, national monuments and heritage. But, you know, the way the 
um, American art market, European art market, Chinese art market, Japanese art market, that kind of development has not happened. But a lot of it also goes back to awareness. So we should build a museum. And, um, you know, we've uh, finally uh, uh, acquired land to build museum near the Delhi airport. And uh, we ran a global competition. And Sir David Ajay, who built the African American Museum at the Smithsonian, has been selected as uh, ar the architect. So I think it will be India's first uh, private museum of a global repute, you know? Um, and I think that I hope that it continues to put Indian art on the map. And of course, also makes us Indians very proud and aware of our own uh, art, especially in the last uh, 100, uh, 120 years. What do you look forward to, Roshni? I mean, you're not even 40. You have incredible wealth. Uh, you are sitting at the top of one of India's largest companies. What drives you? I mean, what is really aspirational for you? Where do you see yourself at, say, 55, 60? What would you have liked to have achieved? Well, I mean, I am 40. <laughs> um, uh, I think, uh, uh, I mean, then I'm, I mean, if it's HCL Technologies, definitely uh, continues to grow much bigger, um, much more dynamic. A lot of the fruits of our labor, um, you know, maybe our PNP business will be as big as our rest of our business as well. Um, lots of aspiration there. Um, if I think of uh, Vidya Gyan, um, which is what I drive at the foundation, uh, I've got a bunch of students who are now coming to the workplace. Uh, maybe some of them will go on to establish their own um, uh, companies and be entrepreneurs. And maybe they'll also have valuations like the ones we're seeing today. And that will make me pretty excited. Um, if I look at the Habitats Trust, mm -hmm. um, you know, in by the time I'm 55, would I, through the Habitats Trust, be able to save a species from extinction? I think that would be a great achievement. Um, uh, I mean, there are so many elements i think uh, you just have to take each day as it comes and make sure that um, you're more effective than you're efficient i think that's what is very important to just to be more effective than efficient who are the people you really admire i mean I, I, of course i'm keeping shiv nader aside we've spoken a lot about him and your mother but i mean if you have to look outside the hcl fold and think about some mentors or people who have really inspired you who would you name I mean, it's a bit out of the box. I don't know how many people would relate to it, but um, I, you know, one of my role models and who I'm really inspired by is Jane Goodall. And I know she's not in tech and she's not, uh, but she's in. And I had the privilege just in September uh, to have, she's in her 80s now, but she's such a force uh, to have mm -hmm. about 25 minutes with her on Zoom, just talking one-on-one. -on -one. And I think it's an experience I will never forget. I met her um, three years before that in 2019 or 18 uh, in January in, at the World Economic Forum. And there were all these world leaders and I went up to her and I took a photograph with her and I said, I wish I could meet you and I could talk to you because she was surrounded by so many people. Um, yeah, but she's unique, but she's a force and um, yeah, the only thing that we're running out of it is uh, clean air and good earth. Yes, and 25 minutes on Zoom that you had with Jane Goodall is, seems to be the kind of a perfect time spent between two people conversing, which is what we've done today, Roshni, and we'll have to end it on that note too. But it's been a pleasure talking to you. I wish you all the best, you and your family, and thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much at the end. Take care. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.